Elon Musk's SpaceX Starlink leads a 21st century gold rush in outer space. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness of the lap song, so good. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking photo, talking video, talking tech. Today is a tech day. We're talking about space. A 21st century gold rush, so to speak, as I call it, in outer space. This has been ramping up for the last year or two, and it's really coming to a head. We're seeing a lot of players out there jumping on board with this data communication, data relaying in outer space. How can we do it more efficiently? How can we get satellites up there quicker? Who's going to launch those satellites for us? What do we do? They're all trying to find that little plot of land or plot in space so that they can hack away or pan away for those gold nuggets. So we see that Elon Musk SpaceX Starlink is leading a 21st century gold rush in space as of right now. I was reading a few articles over on PC Magazine, Space News, and a few other news forums, and I found that this is really fascinating to me because it really shows where we're going, right? Where is the movement, let's say, going when it comes to technology? And space seems to be that new gold rush that's happening. Everyone wants to end up in space doing something, some type of data communication, and trying to do it better and doing it first. We saw that Elon Musk Starlink joined forces with T-Mobile to offer cell phone coverage anywhere on the planet is what they were trying to do. And this includes areas that do not have any cell towers at all. Now this service will come from SpaceX Starlink's version 2.0 satellites, and it will be backhauled to a T-Mobile network. So they were gonna work kind of hand in hand. Now, in the last Apple event, I think they call it Far Out event, they were talking about doing something identical. And Apple was going to get into bed with a company called Global Star. And they were gonna do the exact same thing. Provide service anywhere on the planet, it doesn't matter where you are, through satellites. So once again, we're seeing major players like Apple also getting involved in this great 21st century gold rush in space. Now, the article that I wanna to read to you was originally from Space News and then PC Magazine covered it. And I wanna just read some of it to you just so you get an idea of what is going on here. So it says a test satellite designed to beam broadband to smartphones is slated to launch tomorrow. Tomorrow being this Saturday that just went by. The Blue Walker 3 test satellite comes from Texas-based AST Space Mobile, which is working to build the first space-based cellular broadband network accessible by standard smartphones. The technology promises to help mobile carriers supply broadband at 4G or 5G speeds to customers in cellular dead zones. AST Space Mobile has already entered into partnership with over two dozen mobile carriers that collectively serve over 1.8 billion subscribers. That is a lot of people. That is a lot of people. Quote, whether in the most remote location on rural farmland or in the midst of a crisis or natural disaster, people will remain connected no matter what without having to invest in expensive specialized hardware. Back in the day, you had to use a satellite phone. The phone was extremely expensive and the service was outrageous. Now we're able to do it on a phone, which is unbelievable, guys. They continue by saying, the size of the test satellite is also notable. Its communication array, which AST Space Mobile says, is the largest ever on a commercial satellite. It spans an area of 64 square meters. That's 693 square feet. That is massive. That is massive. According to the New Scientist, that's a magazine, the satellite is so large, it may end up becoming the brightest artificial object in the sky, which could annoy astronomers. Yeah, if you do any type of astrophotography as of today, you're seeing a ton of these streaks, right? From SpaceX and other satellites out there. So, 
astronomers are just going to get really upset. I mean, that's just the way it is. And there's a lot of articles I've read as of late saying that, listen, this is going to adversely affect the way we watch the night skies for impending doom, let's say, a rogue meteor or asteroid or something that we miss because there's all of this space junk out there. They continue to describe this massive, let's call it 700 square foot satellite. The back side of the satellite is covered with solar cells to collect energy. The other side consists of antennas that can beam data to phones on the ground. The result is essentially a low earth orbiting cellular tower in space that can receive cell phone signals hundreds of kilometers away. The satellite can circle around the planet every 90 minutes. So as of right now, if they only put one satellite up there, you're going to get cell phone service, let's say, through this device every 90 minutes. Their goal, I believe, was about 110 of these satellites, but we'll get to that in a second. The company will begin testing the satellite's ability to beam communication signals once it's up in orbit. AST Space Mobile plans to conduct BW3 direct-to-cell phone testing on six continents, including North America. Quote, Mobile network operators, or NMOs, in the mission's test plans include Vodafone and Rakuten Mobile, as well as Orange, among others. AST Space Mobile says that an experimental license from the FCC permits it to conduct the test in Texas, as well as Hawaii. The company has plans to eventually operate 110 satellites before the end of 2024, according to Space News. That is a lot of satellites, 110 of them. But a lot is not a lot when you compare it to SpaceX. SpaceX Starlink has 3,000 satellites and they're going for like 40,000. So we're talking about a lot of space junk going to be orbiting the planet. And like I was saying, astronomers that are really worried about this, astrophotographers that are hating it, but the astronomers that are searching for problematic meteors or asteroids or whatever, pending doom type of things are saying that this is going to be a serious problem. So the way that the scientists are trying to get around this is instead of watching for these pending doom type of asteroids or meteors or whatnot, anomalies that might show up from Earth, which is going to become more and more difficult, they're going to be launching satellites out of our atmosphere so it has a clean view of space. So I'm gonna to venture to say there'll probably be some type of organization or some type of body that has to do with planetary safety that all of these companies that are putting all the space junk satellites into orbit are probably gonna to have to pay into to be able to fund this type of research or these satellites that are up there doing the monitoring. That's what I would guess. But anyways, the kicker here, when it comes to this AST Space Mobile launching these 110 satellites into orbit, that is basically doing the exact same thing that Apple's doing, that all of these other companies are doing, SpaceX, Starlink, and so on and so forth. The kicker is that SpaceX Starlink or SpaceX is the one that's launching these satellites on those Falcon 9s for them. So it's like you're McDonald's and Burger King says, hey, you know, can you make me some burgers? I ran out. So it's like you're helping the competition to grow, which I always think is really fascinating because that's just how it is. Because if not, then you're deemed a monopoly and then there's all kinds of other problems associated with that. So you almost have to help the competition, even if it's just slightly. I was reading another article about other companies that are doing similar type of thing. Once again, involved in this 21st century gold rush in space. And I believe this one was from Space News. Skyloom and Space Compass, a joint venture between NTT and SkyPerfect JSAT, plans to establish a constellation to relay data from low Earth orbit to the ground through satellites in geostationary orbit. Very interesting, right? Almost that middle ground. So you have satellites that are way out there in geocentric orbit, Okay, and then those satellites will relay data to the LEO satellite, which 
Skyloom and Space Compass is putting together, and then they will shoot it off to the ground. I don't know how it would be faster that way, but obviously it is. If not, they wouldn't even bother creating this. The other one is Space Link, based in North Virginia. It says it's building a constellation of four satellites in medium Earth orbit to receive data from spacecraft in low Earth orbit via laser links and transmit it to the ground through RF signal. So once again, we're dealing with laser linking, satellite to satellite to satellite. And that's exactly what SpaceX Starlink is doing with their version two satellites. They all have lasers on board, communication lasers, so they can communicate from satellite to satellite to satellite, and they need less ground stations, right? Very, very important. And we see Spacelink doing the same thing. Now, there's one other company that they highlight here called Kepler Communications. I'm sure some of you guys have heard of them. It says that it plans to begin deploying its Ether data relay constellation, which relies on optical and RF data links early next year. Then there is Capella Space and many other organizations that they list in here that will be involved in this gold rush also. So while we know SpaceX Starlink is the leader in this new frontier, there is countless other companies out there as well as countries all competing in this space data relay sector, so to speak, or as I call it, the 21st century gold rush in space. I think that this is very interesting and where this goes, this might not affect us as of today, but by 2025, I think we are all going to be affected by this. I think the great digital divide of the haves and the have nots where people have high-speed internet access and the people that don't have high-speed internet access, I think that that digital divide is going to become more and more narrow. And if it's not done on the ground through fiber optics, it's going to be done in space. And I think once again, Elon Musk is that leader in this brand new frontier and this 21st century gold rush, as I call it in space. So I want to know your thoughts on this. Once again, I think it's very interesting. What do you think is going to go on here? What do you think the future looks like when it comes to communications? Are you someone in a rural area that's trying to get SpaceX Starlink and you can't get it and you're sitting on extremely slow data speeds? Are you someone like that? Are you currently on the SpaceX Starlink waiting list? I want to hear from you. What do you think about all of this? Also, a lot of you have been asking me which of the VPNs I ended up going with. I tried a bunch of them and it's called Pure VPN. It is really powerful, but if you end up getting that service, make sure you get for an extra $2, I think it is, a static IP and port forwarding. Trust me on this, watch like a video, maybe I'll throw one over here about it. But once you have a static IP address, and port forwarding, now all of a sudden your SpaceX Starlink opens up because right now it's all geo-natted and you don't have your own IP address and some things don't work and I can't get into it in this video. But once again, if you want a VPN for privacy and for security and for the added functionality of having a static IP address and being able to do port forwarding, go check that out. I put a link once again in the description as well as the pinned comment. Also, if you want to get more SpaceX Starlink type of coverage, I did about 70 to 80 videos so far, a whole bunch of helpful how-tos and tips and tricks and what to buy, what not to buy, why to buy it, which is even more important. Go check that SpaceX Starlink playlist. It is, I think, quite good. All right. Some people said that they have binged watched a ton of it and they really love it. So I hope you do also. If you enjoyed this content even a little bit, please throw it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you haven't picked up any of my eBooks as of yet, go pick them up, go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. And if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, you can click this little button down here that says thank you, or even better, become a member of the channel. And finally, Head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Love you all.